Welcome to Sports Beat TV, a production of Oregon Sports Beat. We're coming to you from the Terrain Coffee Project in Vancouver. We're an interview format. We're going to have coaches and players who are going to be with us during our shows. And tonight we're joined by Eric McClellan from the uh, newly formed United PDX soccer team. You are a USL, that's the United Soccer League two division team. And Eric, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Uh, our first time talking to you. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your soccer background. So basically, I was uh, a young kid, about seven years old. My dad you know, threw me out on the soccer field and saw a lot of success. And uh, ever since then, went on to play, uh, obviously, high school and then uh, uh, varsity at Virginia Tech. You're um, originally from Maryland. And originally from Maryland. Played, uh, Soccer at Virginia Tech all four years. I think you were a team captain there your yes. last yep. year. Yep, yep. So I uh, had a great career there. Um, many friends that I speak to today. Well, you're being um, a little modest. <laughs> you not only had a great career, you were actually in the Virginia Tech Hall of Fame, inducted, I think, in 2015? Eight. Eight. 2008. Yeah. yeah, that was a great honor. Yeah, a surprise, but. Uh, when I got the call, it was one of those, it's like, great, I'll, I'll be there and uh, have my speech ready, and it was a great time, so I was very proud of that. Uh, Bruce Smith is in the Virginia Tech Hall of Fame. Yes. Michael Vick is in the yes, Virginia is. Tech yes, Hall of is. Fame, so that's good, <laughs> big honor. Big honor, you know, a lot of big names in there, so just having my name up there with them is, is so tremendous. All right, and after that? After that, went on to play uh, professional soccer for about eight years, indoor and outdoor, and so it's been uh, a great career that I had, you know, paid the bills. Um, it wasn't a uh, time at MLS. Um, MLS came about halfway through my career, but at that time I was kind of established in the indoor soccer um, league, so stayed with that and uh, had a job and did indoor soccer and had a day job at the same time and then family came along, so. You played in the World Indoor Soccer League for the Dallas Sidekicks. Yeah, the CIS CISL, Continental Indoor Soccer League and Dallas Sidekicks. That was my last uh, team I was with. And, Retired in 2000. Some other places that you played in? Yeah, I uh, started off my career in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, for the Harrisburg Heat. At the uh, chocolate factory? Yeah, yeah <laughs> right there in Hershey. Yeah, right there in Hershey in Harrisburg, uh, Pennsylvania. And then I went from there to Washington, D.C., where I kind of basically grew up in Maryland and played for the Washington Warthogs. And then out here for a couple of years for the uh, uh, Portland um, uh, uh, Pride. And, the you know, from there we went to Dallas Sidekicks. Now, the... USL2, um, tell us a little bit about how that league stands in the hierarchy of soccer. Yeah, so basically um, the USL is basically a league that's, uh, they have three tiers for the men's side. So there's the USL championship level, which is division two, which is right below MLS. Um, so MLS, USL, USL championship, and then USL one, and then USL two is what we, our program is a part of. And. That's the team that's going to be starting this year as the USL team, and they are, they are actually called uh, United PDX. Yes, the, uh, that's the men's side, yep. The, your position, as I understand it, you are the assistant general manager. Correct. You're the assistant coach for the men's team. Yes. And you're the head coach for the women's team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk a little bit then about your coaching background. I know you've coached You've been an assistant, a college assistant. Yes. You've been a high school head coach. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I started my career uh, basically at Sunset High School as a JV coach. Um, and then from there, I got the job at Tualatin High School. I was at Tualatin High School for about 10 to 12 years. Um, stopped that in 2012. Um, and then the head coach at Linfield asked me to come on to staff there at Linfield University. I um, was there for about four years. Um, and then after that, just did some more youth uh, coaching. Um, and then I found my way here after, you know, pre-COVID, I kind of stopped at when COVID hit. Um, so like the last two years, I was out of coaching and uh, came back knowing uh, the guys who have started up the United PDX club that's been around about five years. Um, they asked me to come on. So You were at, you were at Tualatin for 10 years. Yeah, about 10 years. They yeah. play in the Metro Conference. Yeah, Metro. And you were coach of the year three times. Yeah. There, 2000, <laughs> You're going way back now. <laughs> 2006, 2007, and yeah. 2009. That had to be a big thrill, too. Yeah, you know, just, I, you know, it's basically the program. It's, it built itself. You know, the kids were great. The parents were great. And the AD gave me great support. So it's just a matter out there just kind of, you know, giving my knowledge and supporting the boys. So. Uh, they rewarded me in that honor with those honors, though. But they were a really good bunch of group of kids. 
Okay, so USL2, which is the level this the United PDX is going to play at, um, is are the players paid? No, this is all amateur, uh, pre-professional. So the USL2 as well as the USL Women's League uh, right now that we're in are both uh, pre-professional. So our next step is to, you know, three to five year plan is to get to that uh, USL1 and then there's a new league for the women called the Super Y League. And that'll be a paid, um, basically paid teams and paid players. So players would move up from USL2 to USL1, they, then they would start getting paid. Yes. And then they make it to the champions. Yeah, paid league, even more. Paid even <laughs> more, more money, and then yeah. see if we can get to the MSL. MLS, yep. Or M MLS. Let's talk about players. How, you, how do you get players? A lot of times it's just um, you know, players that we know, um, local players, you know, University of Portland, Oregon State, uh, just players that I've actually coached in the past, you know, especially on the women's side. Um, the last five years I've been a you know, youth coach on the women's side, so a lot of players have gone on to college level. Um, I've asked them to come back and play. And so that's been great. And then some players that, you know, that teammates of theirs have asked to come on. So we've got about 24, 25 committed girls right now on the on ladies on the women's side. And the men's side is very similar. It's about 25, 26. Have you already had tryouts? Yeah, we had trials for the men's um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the men's side had about 70 players come out. And out of that, we have about five that we've invited back to a, our camp. And we'll get them another look with the, uh, the core guys that we're bringing in to see how they fare and go from there. Let's say I'm a player and I'm, I'm pretty good. I want to play for you guys. How do, I get, uh, how do I get in touch with you to do that? It's pretty simple. It's basically you know, go to the website and just uh, give us an email. And, and you, from there, we just kind of have some communications back and forth. Um, and then from there, if it, if it feels a good fit, have you come out and take a look. And if you're up to the caliber, then we'll, we'll have some conversations about signing you. When do you hope to have rosters set by? We'll probably have rosters set by probably May 1st, so and, in about a month. And then you'll be practicing? We start practice officially on the uh, 16th of May. Now, one of the requirements I understand of USL2 is you have to have media and you have to live stream the games. Yes. Oregon Sports Beat is going to live stream yep. your game and provide commentators, meters, um, media. I'm, I'm going to do your play-by-play. -play. I'm Perfect. Looking, Perfect. For, looking forward to do that. Looking forward to that as well. Now, um, when's your season, season actually start? Yeah, so the women, so we'll start camp on the 16th of May. The women actually have three days of three practices before their first game on the 19th of May, uh, Friday 7 p.m. at OES. Um, and then we'll have uh, the men's a week uh, later on the 26th. So that'll be their home opener. You said OES. You're going to play your games at... Oregon Episcopal School, great field. Yes, yeah, great field, great facilities, locker room facilities and parking, so looking forward to that. Other teams in the league, how many teams are there in the league? So there's, well, the, the big, the larger league, there's over, for the men's side, there's over 100. Um, it's probably about 115. Mm -hmm. um, I don't quote me on the number, but it's about that. Uh, the women's side is about 75, National League. Um, our, there's different, there's four conferences, you know, Eastern, Western, uh, Southeast, and uh, a North Division, conference, sorry. Um, and within that, you have divisions. So the Northwest Division, we have five teams for the women's side, and on the, on the men's side, there's six teams. Where are those teams located? I mean, are, you'll have road trips, right? Yeah, the road trips will span up I-5. So we have uh, up in Olympia, um, a club called Ballard, um, and then Oli Town is up that way, and then the furthest down is in Lane. Um, so there's a team down there in Lane. And uh, have you, these are teams that have already been in the league, correct? You're, you're the new team in the league. Yeah, we're, we're, the, we're the, new, new, uh, the newbie, per se. Who can we look forward to to being really tough teams in the league? I think Ballard would be a tough one. Uh, Ballard for the men's side, uh, the women's side, probably more the, the local team, the PDXFC, you know, because a lot of similar players have played against each other for many years growing up. So. I think that'll be a you know a tremendous uh, opportunity and, and challenge for us. Got any players uh, right now that we might want to look for during the season? Yeah, on the women's side, you know, we have a lot of Division One players um, and some Division Two. You know, Where do you get those players? What? So, like I say, a lot of those are players that I just have uh, you know previous uh, you know experience with. Um, so we got a few girls from UP. You know, the UP uh, Nettie Soan. Um, Kaylee Togiai, you know, there's there's Oh, I recognize the name. Yeah, local kids. Uh, my daughter, Jaden McClellan, she's at Washington State. 
uh, Matty Ellsworth, who's playing in Louisville in the ACC. So we have oh. some good, good, good uh, players coming in. On the men's side, you know, we have players from Stanford, um, Oregon State, UP. We have some international players as well. So um, we're, we're going to have a good side on both, both the women's and men's. Are there age limits for your players? The age limits we have is 23 and under, but however, we do have um, some exceptions. You get up to eight exceptions to have older players. So um, we won't fill that out, but we do have a few players that are um, you know, older than 23. And a roster will consist of how many players? The roster will probably uh, have an overall roster about 30 players, but obviously on game day, only 18 can be rostered per game. So we'll have to make decisions on game day. And the first game for, I think you said for the women is the, May 19th? Yes, Friday, May 19th. And who will that be against? This against PDX FC. Yeah. So and that, that game, of course, will be at Oregon Episcopal. Yes. And there are, since this is a league already in existence, you have stadiums that you'll play in in other, other towns. Have you seen any of those? I haven't seen any of those. I do know the PDX FC will be, I think, at Barlow High School. Oh, um, okay. There, and I think Lane, they have their own facility down there, and Capital FC has one down in their, um, down in the Salem area. But I, I'm not truly familiar with uh, their, their stadiums as, as of yet. If you win this division, you advance to... Uh, playoffs, yeah. To playoffs. Oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah. So it's basically, if we win our division, then we get to go to, into the playoffs starting in... For the women, the, the regular season ends on July 2nd and then put the postseason begins after 4th of July. Um, and then you start to play regional and then national if you go all the way to the, to the championship. The men will start mid-July um, is when their regular season ends and then their playoffs goes until the beginning of uh, August. Well, again, we're going to broadcast your games. We're going to live stream them, and so we're looking forward to that. Yeah. We're going to have you back here before the season starts, maybe, uh, maybe some more coaches and some, more, some yes. of your players, and we'll get a chance to do that. So uh, Yeah, looking forward to that, yeah. <laughs> we're all looking forward to that. Eric, thanks for joining us. Eric McClellan, who is the Assistant General Manager for the um, yeah, United, 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 PDX. United, P <laughs> United PDX. I'm sorry, it's okay. United PDX. And we uh, will bring you those games, and we're looking forward to seeing you. Yeah, I can't wait. Thank you. All right, thanks for joining us. This is Sports Beat TV, a production of Oregon Sports Beat. I'm Dave Hall. Good night.